Hello, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel. We are back with Caller X Malice, still in the prologue. I believe it'll be a couple more episodes at least. I believe the prologue is pretty long. Let's go. After that, we arrived at a corner that was lined with old buildings. This area was lively earlier, but it was now utterly devoid of foot traffic and shrouded in ominous darkness. Doesn't look too dark to me. We're here. Shiraishi pointed to a building with shuttered windows on the first floor. On the fifth floor of this building, Yanagi and the others have been awaiting your arrival. I don't expect much of a welcome. Oh, you just thought I was lying, didn't you? You wound me, madame. Eh? No, I didn't. Yeah, I was lying. Anyway, one thing before you go. What is it? What could it be now? Seeing my obvious apprehension, Shiraishi chuckled. <laughs> From now on, don't think of me as a superior. Meaning? Here, there's no hierarchy of the police department. I'm just another member of the team. I see. Yup. Well, let's go in. Uh, wait! I darted after Shiraishi, who had suddenly entered the building. Then I noticed the tenant's nameplate. Fifth floor. Detective agency? Ah, uh, that's just a name. Don't worry about it. If you don't hurry up, you'll fall behind. I yes. I hurriedly ran up the stairs after Shiraishi in a panic. And then... I hope it doesn't derp. For some reason, the connection to this from my Switch to my PC is kind of crappy. It looks staticky every once in a while. So I hope it doesn't keep doing that. <laughs> Let's just go. I finally set foot into my destination for the evening. You came. Just sit wherever you like. Uh, okay. In the room were the three men I met at Shinjuku Garden, along with Shiraishi. Their expressions were all different, but I felt that they were all sizing me up. I couldn't help but feel unwelcome. You could cut the tension with a knife. Pardon me. At a loss for what to do, I took a seat on the sofa nearest me and watched Janagi. Mm. The mood seemed a bit chillier than it was during the first encounter. This atmosphere is so heavy. Just then, Shiraishi emerged from behind a partition with a cup of coffee. He set it down in front of me, and then slowly took a seat next to Yanagi, on the arm of the sofa. <laughs> it's okay. They're all good guys, despite their looks. I hope that's true. Oh, I forgot what I did with the voices. Hold on a second. Just spit it out so we can be done with this. We don't have time to waste on you. Sasazuka coldly prodded me to speak, without even glancing up from the computer that he was using. You want to get out of here too, don't you? True, but... Now, now. We won't get anything out of her if you're going to be a grouch. We came all this way to be free from prying eyes, after all. Wouldn't now be a good opportunity to examine her collar? Shiraishi... Don't tell me you brought her here just for that. Hmm. I sure did. What's the problem with that? I knew he was just enjoying this. My gloomy mood abruptly turned to anger. I didn't have the luxury of being toyed with right now. And I was not in the mood. I couldn't just simply trust people who would let Chiraishi behave like this. I opened my mouth to vent my rolling indignation. Why don't we introduce ourselves first? We may very well end up all working together soon. The shock from both the statement and being interrupted made my eyes go wide. Working together? What do you mean? Without answering my question, Nagi simply laid a sheet of paper on the table. When I picked it up, I saw it was written with the same red lettering as the earlier note. We have seen that you possess the skill to assist Lady Hoshino. She is one of our sympathizers, and a woman with the potential to inherit our will, so treat her with courtesy. 
Should any harm come to her, we will have no choice but to kill you all. <sighs> Calling me a sympathizer and threatening them? I was racked with shock, fear, and confusion. My hands trembled, but I kept reading. The note continued. Nonetheless, we bear no ill will towards your group. On the contrary, we would prefer to join hands. You, who question the form of righteousness, and the police cling to, would surely find our concept of justice more agreeable. Of course, we do not expect you to be persuaded by mere words. So please, try to grasp the truth of the extate events. Discover our true intentions. You have until midnight on January 1st. We'll be watching you via Lady Hoshino. What on earth do these people want? Joining hands? Does that mean these people are potentially murderers too? And there's not a word about the caller. They said they'd be watching through me. So I'm going to be wearing it forever? Disturbed, I put down the letter. Sasazuka spoke instantly, as if he was waiting for me. So now, we know there's a high probability that you're connected to the culprits. What? Don't go assuming that on your own. I raised my voice at him without thinking, but I hadn't joined the X-Day thugs at all, so I couldn't let unchecked accusations stand. Hmm, she doesn't seem like she's lying. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like your opinion, man. We don't know anything for sure. Oh, it's pretty unusual for you to contradict me, Enemoto. Huh? No, I... No, no, I wasn't trying to criticize you, Shireishi. It's just, there's some people here who can't see through lies, is all. We don't know what type of person she is. Enemoto looked glum, seeing that gave me a different image of him than I had earlier. They might have their own set of unfortunate circumstances, but that doesn't mean I can let them pin this all on me. We don't know what the criminals want, but... Jeez, those eyes. Oof, I love those purple eyes. I sat on the sofa and looked at Yunagi. He nodded in understanding. We can theorize until eternity. Let's hear what she has to say first. Hoshino, could you tell us in detail what happened back in Shinjuku Garden? Yes. They mentioned justice in this letter. When the criminal spoke to me through the caller, they were fixated on justice too. When the caller was put on me, the criminal spoke to me for a little bit. I felt like I was being interrogated, as I stated I had no clue why I was targeted. I didn't understand the criminal's claims and, as a police officer, that I'd done no wrong. I understand what you're saying. We don't have any solid evidence that connects you to the criminals, other than their word. We can't just assume that you're with them. Inagi. Inamoto. Even if she is a spy. Did we reveal any intel to the criminals that would cause any problems for us? I... Feel free to suspect her if you want, but I feel like we won't get anywhere until we trust her. <clears throat> Our pursuit of the x day incidents is important, but we should also look at the caller of yours. Hoshino, even though it was unintentional on your part, the caller is a great lead on the criminals. I say we should make use of whatever we have. I'm guessing I'll do his voice as... I think I already said it, but I'm thinking of doing his as like Saito's, which is like the serious, monotone kind of voice, I guess you can say. Not really monotone, but just serious. <clears throat> I, I'm also sure that you aren't going to be able to relax until we do something about it. That's true. He's actually concerned for my safety. Even though the collar and its ties to the culprits was what they were interested in, it was still very heartening to hear him actually worry about my well-being. But if you're going to examine the collar, oh jeez, I forgot it makes that noise. <laughs> 
I need to mention something. A sudden voice made itself known and directed everybody's attention to the collar. It is futile to attempt to remove the collar. If you insist on trying, we cannot guarantee her safety. You are free to examine it, but if you do anything to inconvenience us, you will also be putting her life in jeopardy. Please investigate the ex-state incidents. Once you learn the truth, I'm sure you will exact your form of justice. You will learn whether or not you believe it is right to oppose our will. So, was that them just now? A warning or a threat, one might say? They bothered to wait until we'd all gathered. They sure crave the spotlight. Oshino, are you alright? Yes, sorry. The criminals are monitoring everything about me through the collar. It was the first time they'd contacted me since I was paralyzed. It looks like they wanted everyone to be sure that they're always watching. I started to feel that this was hopeless, and I wrung my hands in my lap. Well, working together with them is definitely off the table. Even though we all quit, we were cops once, right? I looked up. All of you were police? I did verify that Yanagi was a former officer. And Emoto and Sasazuka... Were you two also police officers? Um, well... Dumbass. Should I just sew your mouth shut? Okay, maybe I'll do more of a hijikata voice for him. I don't know. His voice is kind of... You know, getting... Making me go nuts. Ah! My tongue just slipped. Just one slip. So it's true, then. When I pressed him on it, Inamoto looked to Yanagi in a plea for support. We can't hide it, can we? All she has to do is look us up in the station. Right. We should get this over with. You two introduce yourselves to Hoshino. After all, we're probably going to be seeing her a lot more often now. Gah, roger that. Inamoto quietly cleared his throat. Then he turned to me and made eye contact. He took a deep breath. Oh, jeez. Okay, I know I'm going to butcher this, so I do apologize. Perk up your ears and listen well. Formally assigned to Field Ops to Team 2. Before you stands a kabi- Kabuki Mono rivaling Keiji Maeda. I don't know how to say that, so I do apologize. Field Ops Team 2. The Field Operations Unit is the enforcement arm of the Metropolitan Police Department and regional police offices. They are mainly in charge of important cases. Mineo Enomoto was a member of the Field Ops Team 2. Kabuki Mono? I guess that's how you say it. Kabuki Mono were flamboyant, flashy samurai prevalent during the end of the Warring States period in the early Edo period. 1596 to 1643. They were known for their ostentatious manners and style. The crooks I've arrested are without number. A shining silver samurai worth 1,000 cops. A paragon standing alone neath the stars. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Is it going to do the sound? No, it's not going to do this. Oh, it did it. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do it because I turned off like music and stuff, so yay. That is, I, Mineo Enomoto. Don't forget it, rookie. Mm. Uh? He's freaking awesome. Mineo Enomoto, 23 years old, formerly Shinjuku Station, Field Ops Team 2. Now he will be our first boy, our first route, just so you know. Why all the kabuki mannerisms? Oh, he did say he's a kabuki mono. Hey, you don't need to humor him. I don't know if he's got talent or a condition, but he's a subject I like to observe at a distance. Uh, right. Don't mind him, Hoshino. That's just how Enomoto hides his nerves. He's just a bit of an awkward guy. 
Paragon? Paragon of nincompoops, more like it. Oh, yeah? I will not tolerate any further slights. Anyway, it's your turn, Takaru. Takaru Sasazuka. Police HQ Cybercrime Prevention. I was in the Cyber Crimes Division. Takaru Sasazuka. That's all. Cyber Crimes Division. The Cyber Crimes Division is a part of the safety department of the Metropolitan Police Department that deals with high tech crimes such as illegal systems access and information technology crimes. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!